For years, gaming on satellite internet was simply impossible due to very high latency. However, once SpaceX Starlink internet entered the mix, their satellites in much lower orbit compared to existing brands like Viasat, suddenly gaming was possible on satellite internet in very rural areas. And we're already seeing in early 2024 that Download and upload speeds are actually pretty competitive to some of the Earth-based internet providers like Comcast, Spectrum, Mediacom, etc. But how does it exactly compare when milliseconds matter? In gaming, of course. Well, it's been a while since I've done a full video on gaming. I figured, why not now? Let's take a look at how the latencies are impacted by Starlink and we'll compare it to a legacy name and that of Spectrum just to kind of see how things shape up. Now, first and foremost, before we get too deep into this video, I do think it's worth mentioning that yes, you can game on Starlink and yes, you can do it in very rural areas. You can take this internet product as long as it has power and pretty much game anywhere, either by Wi-Fi or Ethernet with the right adapters, and you can game. And for many people that haven't had that ability to before, Starlink is simply incredible. And so without getting too deep in the weeds here, I just want to say that yes, 100%, you can game on Starlink. And I'm not just talking about real-time strategy games where those milliseconds don't matter as much as, say, a first-person shooter. First person shooters are in fact playable. However, for other big name internet providers, those latencies tend to be a bit lower. But most importantly, when it comes to Starlink versus many other legacy names that I'm gonna be comparing this against, is that the fluctuations in latency, that is more important than the latency itself. Time to jump into the data. Let's talk about how we are collecting it. We'll be playing the first 30 seconds of games of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, and we will be recording the latency every second. We'll be plotting it across the game. We'll be doing 12 games on Starlink, 12 on Spectrum, and we'll do another 12 on Starlink, the high performance dish. And what we'll be looking at, of course, is the latency across the board, the high, the min, but most importantly, the range in individual games. And the range is where Starlink really has its problems. We'll start off with Starlink and you can see one of those graphs scare way off the scale, over 600 milliseconds the peak. We will kind of shorten that Y axis down to zero to 150 milliseconds and can kind of get a better idea of exactly what's going on here. There's some pretty big fluctuations in the singular game, just second to second. In fact, when you look at the range in each game, there are some pretty wild numbers here. 30, 40, 90, 180 to as high as, well, 580 milliseconds. That's all in the first 30 seconds of individual matches. Trust me, you can feel that. It's one thing playing at a high latency, but it's another thing playing at a latency that's constantly jumping all around. I wanna compare it to Spectrum. Here are 12 games on Spectrum internet, and you can see those lines are very flat across the board, a very negligible impact across the board in those first 30 seconds. It's a much smoother experience and one that's much easier to play on. Here are the ranges just for fun. The highest two milliseconds from high to low in individual game, the lowest zero. Game three had a consistent latency across the board. Switching over to Starlink, the high performance dish. Yes, the numbers are certainly a bit better, but the ranges are still present. Not as bad as the standard home dish at home, but you can see some of those ranges, they're talking 10 to 15 to 30 milliseconds in just the first 30 seconds of gameplay. When you put them all together, there are some noticeable problems with Starlink, those latencies jumping frame to frame. Bottom line here, Starlink has really been a game changer. If people wanna play games in very rural areas where they don't have internet service, it's playable. That's the most incredible thing and my biggest takeaway. With SpaceX internet, you will have other downsides with satellite internet. Most importantly, weather. With heavier rainfall events or heavy snow events, you will have some degradation in service. 
the more spiky latencies and lower download and upload speeds because of that. However, when it's not chaos outside, overall it's pretty darn good. In fact, I've taken my Starlink dish in very close proximities to tornadoes, very large hail, very heavy rainfall, and I've been able to use the service just fine. It's just when you're in the thick of it is when it tends to be the most problematic, which in itself I think is pretty incredible. Improvements will continue to be made as well as more satellites are uploaded into orbit, as well as more technology is updating the existing satellites that are in orbit as well. In fact, Elon Musk has tweeted that they hope to get that millisecond latency down to 20 to 40 milliseconds. That's pretty incredible if they can pull that off. I personally, I'm gonna play the bit pessimistic card. I'm not super optimistic that you can get latencies with satellite internet down to that little just because of the number of things you have to worry about, not only in space, but also down here at Earth as well. There's just so many things I feel that can go wrong, but I would love to be proven wrong. I'm a huge supporter of SpaceX Starlink Internet. I think it is an amazing technology. It's changing the way we run our lives with working from home, education from home, and well, gaming, maybe perhaps on top of a mountaintop. So without a doubt, Starlink is changing the way that our lives are run. And I do think there's so much more that we can do with it. However, it's not perfect. And latencies are one of the areas that needs to be a little bit better, especially again, it's not so much the latency number itself, it's the fluctuations over a very short period of time, which make it very noticeable. This doesn't have much of an impact on other games like say Civilization VI, and you're not gonna really notice these big changes in short periods of time. But on fa very fast paced games like Fortnite or Call of Duty, you will certainly notice that increase in that latency. So it's not perfect. I wouldn't choose Starlink over big names, especially like Spectrum, Comcast, Mediacom, wherever, AT&T, Uverse, all the different providers out there. However, it's competition. Competition is good, and in any case, at least how I'm using it, it also makes as a very good backup in case you need internet, you can trust on Starlink and I've been able to trust on Starlink a lot more than I thought I would. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like. Please subscribe for more videos as well. We're just getting started. Starlink continues to get better and better and I'm gonna continue to do more and more tests. So please follow along. I also do wanna do a video dedicated to storm chasing on Starlink, chasing tornadoes, hurricanes, very large hail events. How well can you do it with SpaceX Starlink internet? Spoiler alert, it's pretty awesome. I do think the video will be pretty entertaining. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again in the next video.